All right, so today we're going to talk about um, similar solids. We've talked about similar shapes before, and we're going to use the idea of similar solids to help us find volumes and surface areas. Um, so let's go ahead and take a look. Uh, similar solids. Well, they are kind of what they were with two-dimensional shapes, right? So similar solids um, are two solids of the same type with equal ratios of corresponding linear measures, such as heights or radii. So linear measures is pretty much any measure that has a unit that is to the first, ter or first power, right? So like this length, this depth, this height, all would have a linear unit because it'd be a unit to the first power, inch, centimeters, squares, uh, sorry, centimeters, millimeters, whatever. Okay, so if we were to write ratios amongst the corresponding linear measures, that would look like 5 to 15, if we compare that to that, 3 to 9, and 7 to 21. And if we reduce all of those, they reduce all down to 1 to 3. So the scale factor of these guys is 1 to 3. Remember, that's what we did before with similar shapes, similar triangles, similar whatever, is that we came up with the scale factor between corresponding parts. And that scale factor has to hold true for any other measure. And we use that to help find the missing side, right? So if we didn't know the height of this uh, prism and we knew the height of this one, we could always go 7 to x has to equal the scale factor, which is 1 to 3. Cross, multiply, and solve and find out that that side is 21. Okay? That's what we did before. But now we're going to take a look at um, surface area and volume, right? If we found the surface area, and I'm going to write the ratio of the surface areas once I have them. Um, the surface area of this prism, you would use the formula 2 times the area of the base plus the perimeter of the base times the height. Now, I'm going to do this pretty quick just for time purposes, but uh, the area of the base is 5 times 3 is 15, 15 times 2 is 30. The perimeter ends up being 16, and then the height is 7, so we go 30 plus... Uh, and this is, what, 2, 112, so it's 142 square units. So for the small one, the surface area is 142. And if we did this for the large one, right? All right, so the same formula for the surface area of the big guy. So the area of the base, 15 times 9 Right, let's do that 15 times 9, as soon as I get my calculator up. 135 times 2 is 270. Now the perimeter of that base is 15 and 15 is 30, plus another 18 is 48, times the height, which is 21. So 48 times 21 gets us 1143. So we go 270 plus 1143 is equal to, uh, if we add that, 1413. If we divide 1413 by 142, in other words, uh oh, made a mistake. Where did I mess up? So 15 times 9 is 135 times 2 is 270. Now we find the perimeter of this base, 15 plus 15 is 30, plus 9 plus 9 should be 48, so 48 times 21 is 1,008, so I'm not sure where I made that mistake. So let's make this right. So this is going to be 1,278. Now, if I write the ratio of these two surface areas... Right, I'd want to reduce that. Well, if I divide 1278 by 142, I'll do that in order to make this 1. So 142 divided by 142 is 1. 1278 divided by 142 is 9. 
So as you can see, if we reduce this ratio, it's not equal to the scale factor. It's actually equal to the scale factor squared. Right? Square the 1, you get 1. Square the 3, you get 9. So what we find out here is that if the, the similar solids have a scale factor of A to B, then the corresponding areas have a ratio of A squared to B squared, which makes sense because area is in square units. Okay? So if we were missing one of the surface areas, right, if we wanted to set this problem up from the beginning, let's say we knew the small one and wanted to find the large one, then we, knew, we, then we would know that the scale factor were 1 to 3, that those ratios should be equal to the scale factor squared. So 1 squared is 1, 3 squared is 9, and then we can cross multiply and find that 1278. Okay? What about the volumes? What about the volumes? If I find the volume, um, now volume is just the area of the base times the height, so much easier to find. For the small one, 5 times 3 is 15, 15 times 7 is equal to 105. So the volume of the small one is 105. The volume for the big one is 15 times 9. Right? Uh, which is 135 times the height, which is 21. This is 2835. So now if I compare these two volumes and then try to reduce that ratio, it would reduce down to 1 over 27, which is not the scale factor. So the volumes do not reduce down to the scale factor. They reduce down to the scale factor cubed. 1 cubed is 1, 3 cubed is 27, which again hopefully makes sense because volumes in cubic units. So to fill in the rest of this um, definition down here, if similar solids have a scale factor of A to B, then the corresponding areas have a ratio of A squared to B squared, and the corresponding vo uh, volumes have a ratio of A cubed to B cubed. Right, so the bottom line is the ratio of any linear measurement between two similar objects is always going to be equal to the scale factor, A to B. And that includes perimeters, because perimeters, if you add up all the sides, you're still going to end up in a linear unit, a unit to the first power. The areas are in the ratio of the scale factor squared, and the volumes are in a ratio of the scale factor cubed. Okay? We can use that idea to find missing uh, surface areas and volumes, right? So here's the rest of this. Um, all right. First of all, how would we identify similar solids? So tell whether these solids, these two prisms, are similar to that one, to the top one, top right. How would you know? Well, think about that for a second. Remember our definition, similar solids. If their corresponding linear measures are in the same ratio. So I would need to compare the length to the length, the depth to the depth, and the height to the height. And reduce them. 2 to 1, 2 to 1, 1 to 1. Uh-oh. No, these guys are not similar. But the prism in B, we can go 6 to 4. 3 to 2, and 3 to 2, and know that this guy reduces down to 3 to 2, so they're all going to be in the same ratio. So yes, these two solids are going to be similar. And you have to check all three dimensions there. Um, for a cylinder, then you'd only have two, really. I mean, you have a radius and a height to consider. 
So it just depends on what dimensions you have to worry about as far as determining if it's two solids are similar. Okay? Now, how to use the idea of similar solids. So we have these two cans here, these two cans of peaches, and they're similar, and they have a scale factor of 87 to 100. Okay, how could you use that to find, and we, well, not just that, but we have the surface area and the volume of the small can. How could you use that to find the big can? Well, surface area first. I know the surface area of the small can is 5184. If I were to compare that to the surface area of the big can, and we don't know that, so let it be x, then that comparison would have to be equal to the scale factor squared. So 5184 over x would have to equal 87 squared. which is 7569. 100 squared is 10,000. We're going to cross multiply and solve. So we got 7569x equals 518,400. Now divide that by 7569. And the big can has a volume of approximately 68.50 cube, I'm um, sorry, surface area. Did I say volume? Surface area of 68.50 inches squared. Okay, so we had to set the ratio of the areas equal to the scale factor squared. That's the bottom line there. Okay, now if we wanted to find the volume, that's our next step here. So we'll get rid of this and talk about volume. If I were to compare the volumes, so 28.27 to x, would have to equal, since it's volume in cubic units, it would be equal to the scale factor cubed. Right, so 28.27 to x would have to equal 658,000 so 503 over 1 million. Now we cross multiply. We get 658,503x equals 20, uh, let's see. So 28,270,000. I could have done that in my head, but that's all right. Now we're going to divide that by 658,503 and determine that the volume of the big can is 42.93 cubic inches. Okay, but we had to set it equal to the scale factor cubed. That was kind of the point there. All right. So again, these similar cans of peaches, the parts are going to be equal to this uh, scale factor if we write a ratio. The perimeters would be equal to the scale factor. The areas were equal to the scale factor squared. The volumes are equal to the scale factor cubed. Okay? All right. Next type of problem you might see with this. 
Okay, uh, we've got two pyramids, Pyramid P and Pyramid Q, and they each have a volume of 1,000 and 216 cubic inches, respectively. Find the scale factor from P to Q. Well, we know that if we write the ratio of their volumes, then those ratios are going to be equal to the scale factor, but cubed. So how do we get from 1,000 over 216 to the scale factor? Well, we could try to just cube root. Right? That's how we get from A cubed to A and B cubed to B. So we get to A to B. The cube root of 1,000 is going to be 10, and the cube root of 216 is 6. Reduce that down to 5 over 3, and that becomes your scale factor. You're going to have to find a way to find the cube root of these numbers in your calculator. In different calculators, there are different ways to do it. So if you have any questions about how to get your calculator to do it, make sure you come find me, and we'll figure it out. Okay? But that's, that's how we go from the volumes down to the scale factor. Okay, last not least, we want to try to figure out uh, we're going to do some sewing, right? Not, or some knitting, I guess. Not sewing, but knitting. And we're going to go buy some balls of yarn. And the store offers up two different sizes. One bigger than the other. The diameter of the larger ball is twice the diameter of the smaller ball. If the balls of yarn cost $7.50 and $1.50 respectively, which ball of yarn is the better buy? Well, the first step has to become, so step one, we need to know how much larger the big ball is compared to the small ball. And that's what a ratio tells you. That's what the scale factor tells you. So find the scale factor. Well, since the bigger ball has a diameter twice the size of the smaller ball, that means that the bigger ball of yarn is twice as big. So the scale factor would be 2 to 1. Okay? Now, the question becomes, for the price, which ball of yarn gives you more yarn per dollar, more yarn for the money, right? Well, think about a ball of yarn. There's yarn all the way down to the middle of that ball. So how would we figure out how much ball of, how much yarn is in that ball? Well, we're talking about volume, right? So what we would really need to do is now we know that one ball of yarn is twice as big as the other. To find out how much more yarn it has, we need to find the volumes, or at least know how much more volume the big ball of yarn has compared to the small ball of yarn. And volume is always equal to the scale factor cubed. So we're going to cube 2 over 1 to get 8 over 1, which means the larger ball of yarn is actually 8 times larger, or not larger, it actually contains 8 times more yarn than the small ball. Now the question becomes, how much more expensive is it? We can find that out by comparing the prices and reducing the prices down to a scale factor, basically. And if we do that, if we reduce $7.50 over $1.50, $7.50 is five times more expensive than $1.50. Now, since the price of the larger ball of yarn is five times more, but you're getting eight times more yarn, which one ends up getting, being the better buy? And hopefully you're thinking that the large ball of yarn would be the better buy. Right? So the large ball is the better buy. because it offers more yarn
for the price, if that makes any sense. Okay? So that's another way we can use this idea of scale factors and uh, similar and um, the idea that the ratio of the volume is, is the scale factor cubed. Okay? Uh, homework's out in Canvas. Give it a shot. Have it done by next time.